Let's take a look at the light types here in Cinema 4D. The first thing that I want to do is come over here and drop a floor into the scene. Okay. I'm going to put a cube in the scene. And I'm also going to put a sphere in the scene. Now, I want these to be sitting on my floor object here. So I'm going to come over here to the sphere. I'm going to come to the coordinates tab. Take this up 100. And I'm going to do the same thing for the cube. Take that up 100. Move these so they're not sitting on top of one another. Okay. Now I've created just some very, very basic materials here. The red material, a blue material, they just have blue and red respectively in the color channel. And then I've got one that has a checkerboard, which is basically just a texture. Come over here, come over here to surfaces, choose checkerboard. I could go into the checkerboard. This really isn't the material section, but I could come in here and I could change these parameters here. But I'm just going to take the checkerboard. I'm going to put it on top of the cube to apply it. That's one way to apply materials. I can take the red and come over here and apply it to the floor. Okay. I'm going to take the blue color and apply it to the sphere. So now if we come over here and re-render this scene, picture viewer in here, you can see we have a very flat scene that is being lit by the default light that is automatically put in your scene when you create anything new in Cinema 4D. So let's come over here and put our own light in the scene. So we're just going to come over here, click light. And you'll see immediately everything gets dark. That's because when you put your own light in the scene, it turns off the default light. All right. So I want to come over here. I'm going to pick this light up. Let's just turn around here a little bit. I'm going to move it over here. So I'm going to come over here to the light, and I'm going to change the light type. I'm going to come over here to general, and right now we're using an omni light. I'm going to change this to a spotlight. And you'll see if we render the scene right now, we get nothing, and that's because the spotlight is pointing away from our objects. So if we want to illuminate our objects, we're going to have to turn our light towards our objects, and we can do that. Now I might come on over here, grabbing this, pointing it down. Now I'm trying to get it exactly where we want it. Now there's nothing wrong with that. It certainly works. This is the way most people probably would do it. But a, another way that we could do this, and one that I personally think is much more effective, is we could come over here to Cameras. And again, this is as long as you have the object selected. You could come to Cameras, Set Active Object as Camera. Now what's going to happen now is we are using the light, and we're looking through the light as if it were a camera. So now we can come over here. And we can get very specific, and it's very easy for us to see where our light's pointing. Okay? This is a much more effective way to direct your lighting, in my opinion. And then when you're done with the setup, you can come back over here and say, Use Camera, Default Camera, and that's going to take us back out. And we can see that we've got it lined up. Perfectly. Now let's just come over here. Let's turn on our shadows. Do a quick render. And there you go. Okay, let's go ahead and shut that down. And let's take a look at some of the parameters that we can adjust with our lights. So I have control over here of the inner angle. We'll notice what's going on right here on the light. So the inner angle. And see how that sort of affects the area here, the outer angle. We wanted to get something much narrower. We could do that. The aspect ratio is going to allow us to stretch or shear the cone. Let's see that better from here. Another way to make some of these same adjustments is to grab the little orange dots on the light itself, 
and we can control some of these parameters. You'll notice they change over here when I'm pulling on these. So I can adjust the angle and then I could take this out, adjust it with my orange dots, and I could do a render here, get this sort of an effect. Now if we come on down here, a little further down, we have different types of fall off. No fall off, inverse squared, which is physically accurate. These are just different types you can play around with. You can also do a colored fall off. So if we wanted to do a gradient, we could say, let's choose a color here, a blue, click OK. And an orange. I don't know why we would do anything like that. So you can see we're getting sort of a, a gradient fall off there. Very ugly. Let's just turn that off. Okay, so let's get rid of this light. Delete that out of the scene. And let's come over here and let's get a target light. Now this is very similar to the spotlight, except that it comes with a null that you can control, animate independently. Anywhere the null goes, the light follows. Okay? So a good example of when you might use something like this, if you have an object in your scene that is constantly moving that needs to be illuminated by a spotlight, you could attach this null to the moving object and the light would constantly update and follow it. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Let's take a look at the area light. Now, this light shoots out light rays from all points on its surface, and it goes in all directions. So let's just come over here, and we'll take the light, and we'll pull on the orange dots to increase the size of the light. And maybe just pull it up here. And here's a neat little trick. Let's come over here and turn the light so that we're going down, facing the cube and the sphere. Let's even come over here and set active object as the camera so that we can see a little better what we're looking at. Let's get it lined up. Back over here, use default camera. Now I'm going to come over here to the light general tab and for shadows I'm going to turn on area shadows. Let's give that a quick render. So we get these nice soft area shadows. Now you can always come over to the Shadow tab and control some of your shadow properties, like the density. So if I wanted to turn the density of the shadow up, you can see this gets darker. Turn the accuracy up. We turn this to 64 samples. Let's give that another quick render. All right. The only downside of the area lights with the area shadows is it takes a pretty big render hit. So the more of these you have in your scene, the slower it's going to start getting. Now you can also change your shadow type. So right now we've been working with area. We could do soft shadows, and these actually render quicker than anything else, the soft shadows. Okay. We could do ray traced hard, which gives it sort of a sunlight, sunlight hard feeling. Okay. Again, you can control the density of these. Actual color, so if you wanted a much lighter shadow, you could do that. Well, at 6%, I guess we're not going to get much. There we go. Now if we come back over here to Shadow Map, you can also take the Shadow Map and turn that up right here, something like 2000 by 2000. Then you're going to get a much nicer looking shadow. Okay, so again, these are just some of the light types that we have to work with here in Cinema 4D. We'll talk a little about some of the more advanced lights in another movie, but this ought to give you something to start playing around with.